Please note, folks, I do not know everything, nor do I understand everything, and that the details and information I provide in this tutorial can be subject to change as well as future updates, and I do not have all the knowledge on stuff. One of the things that we're going to be covering is prefixing, and I do not know everything about it, so please be aware of this. Now let's go ahead and get started. Hello folks, today we are going to be covering the Add-on Builder, which is a tool provided by Daisy to be able to build the PBOs, which are the essential backbone of being able to add in content to Daisy, change content, or, or change functionalities within the game. This is essentially the corner block of being able to build your mods, and the Add-on Builder is the tool that is given to us by default from Daisy. The add-on builder uh, by default is actually known by most modders as add-on breaker as in the past it was very controversial and very problematic. However, recent updates have made the add-on builder quite handy and quite useful if you do not wish to use its alternative of Micro's tools, which is just as good if not better in most situations. However, I prefer to use add-on builder, so let's go ahead and take a dive at it. So the first thing we gotta do is put up the add-on builder through daisy tools to be able to get to daisy tools you can go to your steam and you can then type in daisy tools here if you do not see your daisy tools when you type it in to the search name you have to go to the drop down just above and make sure that you have tools enabled i already have mine favorited so let's just go ahead and boot it it's going to launch in admin mode so let's go ahead and get started so we have our daisy tools right here let's go ahead and minimize the steam so in our daisy tools from on the left hand side the third down is our add-on builder let's go ahead and launch that so here we have our add-on builder so as you can see we have many options inside of our add-on builder and the first option we have is add-on source directory which is right up here the add-on source directory points directly to the very first folder inside of your mod structure so my very first folder in this example is in my P drive, which is where you should be doing most of your modding work. And it is called Ammo Packing Unpacking Mod. When I pack this PBO using Add-on Builder, it would pack from Ammo Packing Unpacking Mod into the folder structure inside of it, all the way to the very end and everything contained inside. If I were to start it from, let's say, a file path like just below, which is the C program files, 86, Steam, Steam apps, common daisy server, everything, it would start literally at the C file, which folks do not have on their computer, which is why you always pack from the P drive, because the P drive automatically fills in the file pathing for wherever the mod is being loaded from, so it always loads in the assets required for texturing models and other such things. Next up is the destination directory or file name with .ppo extension. This just allows you to, when you're packing this, to directly put the PBO inside of a folder structure that you wish to have it in. This is very handy, especially when you are testing as well as when you're just packing your PBOs because you can pack your PBOs to whatever file path you want by just changing this line and not having to set up a lot of things. Next up is our add-on prefix, as you can see right here. The add-on prefix allows you to overwrite a core PBO or someone else's PBO entirely and allows you to introduce new things such as some vanilla changes. Like let's say if you wish to redo all of the textures on the vehicles but not necessarily retexture them, you could do this by doing a add-on prefix. Or let's say you wanted to add bloody clothing into your server for all the vanilla files without having to go through and make a retexture for all of them, you could do this by uh, prefixing all the RV mats in the file and then packing it, it would automatically overwrite that file. To better understand prefixing, I would suggest uh, Googling this uh, for the Arma 3 as well as on the official BI. I'm pretty sure there are a couple of other videos on YouTube that talk about prefixing in more detail, so I would suggest going and looking at that. Add-on version, this is basically just saying that my add-on version is 1.0, 2.0, and such. It doesn't really matter, it's just so you can keep things better calculated as well as organized. The option to clear temp folder just makes it so when you pack your mod, the mod folder will create a backup while packing and put it inside a folder or a temp folder that is inside of your P drive. Upon the completion and successfully packing your PBO, the temp folder that it created, in this version it would be the ammo packing unpacking mod, would be deleted from the temp folder. However, the .ppo would be inside of the file path from the destination directory or file name and would allow you to test or to push uh, to Steam or to boot up your server with. 
pretty much just makes it so if you ever have mistakes, you can have a temporary backup that you can go and look at to make sure that you don't have anything there in case your core file structure somehow got corrupted. The next one is Sign Output PBO. Sign Output PBO just allows you to sign your PBOs with a private by key, which is required for any public or even uh, private mods to be used. This pretty much just says this person has to have put this by key inside of their keys folder of their prime ser root folder server, the root file of the server called keys, to be able to boot up your mod and run the stuff inside of it. If they do not have the buy key and your PPO does not have a uh, buy sign attached to it, it would not be loadable into the game. So it's very important that you make sure when you sign this, you can do, this, do that later. But we'll talk about that in a quick second on how to make sure you are attaching your private buy key to the add-on builder. Next one is bi binarization or binize. Binize pretty much states that if someone were to unpack your mod, and let's say they want to look at one of your models, they would get the thing, uh, a thing popping up in Object Builder saying, this model is binarized and you cannot look at it and we just show them a big square block. This is also a way to make it so the DAISY code reads your entire file structure properly and other things as well. I've heard before from a very reputable source, Damon Forge, that binarizing your files is very important, otherwise some wonky things can happen. Next up, we have the binarized all textures, which you probably can guess is the binarization of the textures themselves. And then finally, we have our enabled extended logging, which if you have this enabled and you were to push pack, it would then uh, start to put all of this stuff in here, and then you can look at all this beautiful stuff go through it, find out any issues or problems if you have any problems with packing. If this were to fail, it would throw up an error for me in a big block, uh, box that I would have to click OK on, but it's successful. You can see the build successful is here, and you can see all of the information you have here when it's doing, telling you all the files that were properly synced, used, and visualized in this packing process. Down below here, we have our options, we have our about, and then we have our logs. The logs will take you directly to the file structure uh, to the log, um, the logs for the add-on builder and every other log that is created when using Daisy tools. You do have to make sure that you empty this out every once in a while as it can get quite full if you are doing a lot of packing and unpacking or building of mods. The about really just talks about the add-on builder and all the other cool stuff. And then finally, we have our options. We're going to be talking about the options right now. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just boot up our options and we can see here it boots up a small window called options. First tab we have here is called general and the second tab is called tools. We're going to focus on general first off. And then below here is the list of files to copy directly, comma or semicolon separate the list of patterns. So as you folks can see here, I have the star, period, emat, and then I have a semicolon. So let's go ahead and break down this, what's happening here. So the star is, this is the beginning of a new file to ignore. The period is the period before any file uh, structure name. And then the emat is the, the type of file name. So like .txt, .pdf, and so on is what it's doing. And then you have the semicolon closing it, which is right there. So when it's all put together, it kind of looks a little bit compact and it looks like that. However, the star is the start of a new thing, so you can see star is the start of a new thing, then we have the period, PTC, and then we have the semicolon ending it, star, start of a new thing. Now, I like to use the following uh, structure, which I'm going to show you guys in a notepad++ if you wish to copy it. Well, let's go ahead and take a closer look at all of this so let's go ahead and grab this entire section here and let's paste it into notepad plus plus so you guys can see the entire thing now you can see here that the star is the start of the beginning of it dot emat and then a semicolon to end it and then we keep repeating this now the reason why this is important is because this pretty much allows you to ignore these files and to copy them directly into the PBO without binarizing them. So it is important to note that some of these files are important to ignore, such as the image set and the layout. The image set and the layout, if binarized, cannot show up as 
icons or personal ghost images like the attachments that you see with like grenades and magazines and stuff like that when you make your own custom one. If you do not ignore these, then they can have issues and can cause potential problems. If you're using Micro's tools, most of these excludes can be ignored. However, I would say at the dot um, at the end, the dot CPP, which if you folks look in the upper right hand corner, I have a video talking about the config CPP and most of its entries and what I know about them. The config CPP controls how you implement most items and models into the game and their damage values, the textures attached to them, and so on. If you do not ignore the config CPP inside of the binarization process, it can break your health system, making it so if you put your starting uh, health system at one, it may not go to damaged or badly damaged or ruined based off the health statuses. So it's very important to make sure that you at least always include the .cpp in the files to ignore when copying directly. So let's go ahead and move that down. I'm pretty sure you guys have looked at that long enough. The next one here, which has directly to do with the site output PPO, is the path to the private key. Now, you folks may have noticed when I booted up the options, the sign output PPO has become bright white instead of grayed out. And that is because it finally has been told when I clicked on my options that this is the path to my private key. And as you can see here, we have the path to the private key goes P drive, private keys, ammo making, S dot dump dot by private key. Now, if I click on the three dots, I could technically go to any folder I wanted to in my entire computer and change it. But we're going to go to the private keys, and then all I have to do is just double click on the one I want to use, and voila, there it is. Now, I do have multiple keys here, but one of the keys I do have is the testing key. I have a testing key because I like to pack all of my PBOs with a testing key. However, be warned, make sure you change this before you push it, because if you have a different buy key inside of your keys folder in your mod than you are signing with, it can cause problems, or will cause problems, rather, Thing. This is the path to the temp folder. I have my temp folder located in my local and you probably will too. The path to the project folder is also a thing where you can say my project folder is my P drive. So if I go here and go to my thing, I can go right there and this is the path to my project folder. And when I click OK, it'll be fine. I don't really use this because I always am packing for my P drive. So it doesn't necessarily have to worry about that. So you could technically go to libraries. I have my P drive inside of my .c and voila, that would tell it the direct path to the P drive. Then down here, you have the author. This is use defaults. It will use your Steam name. If you don't want it to use your Steam name, you can just change it down here by clicking off use default. And then finally, you have the exclusion pattern list file name. Uh, the file which contains the list of the file pattern, which shouldn't ex um, be excluded in the resulting PPO. So this is very, very helpful and can be pretty used. I never take it off default. I suggest you don't either. And then we can click onto our tools. So finally, <clears throat> we have our tools. Now these are just all of the default paths to the tools. If you ever move, let's say, your paths, which I would not recommend at all, you can click, uncheck the default mark and click these three tabs. Again, I do not recommend doing this at all. Most times you do not need to touch these or mess with these at all. However, if you find the need or the will to do so, you can just uncheck the use default and click that. But I highly advise against it. And then you click OK and voila, we have it done. So now I can then click on the three things over here to my source directory. I can go in here and go, oh yeah, I want to pack a dump craw. Click here. Voila, I now have dump craw. Then if I go uh, to here, I can go program files and oh, I don't want it to go there. I want it to go to my server. So we can then browse through here for our server. So here we can go here and we can click, no, I don't want it to go there. Let's go ahead and put it into my uh, blacksmithing mod. Click add-ons, click okay. And then when I click to pack down here, it will ask me if I wish to overwrite a PBO if the PBO already exists. If the PBO does not exist, it will automatically start to pack this. Then I just click yes, and voila, there we go. And it will now output to the file. And voila, the build is successful. 
Now, if you ever do that the build is not successful, please try at least one more time, and then uh, you can then verify if the build is actually it properly made or if it was just a fluke with the add-on builder. And this, folks, is the end of the add-on builder tutorial. Again, I really like the add-on builder, but there are other tools such as Micro's tools that are just as powerful and give a lot more feedback and helpful. Most times I like to use add-on builder for the bulk of my mod building, and then I like to use Micro's tools to polish it off. Uh, if you guys want to know more about Micro's tools, please feel free to uh, search YouTube for Micro's Tools Daisy, and I'm pretty sure someone has set up a guide for do that. I will be making one eventually myself. However, I will not be making one very soon. So go ahead and check them out. And if this you watch this a couple of weeks or months after I posted this video, go ahead and look at my channel to see if I actually made one yet. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time, and I hope you all enjoyed this.